principal attention, of course, is on what is taking place here on Saturday night. Top of the bill, these two guys alongside me. We've got uh, Paddy Barnes in over his third uh, professional fight, triple Olympian, uh, twice the bronze medalist, up against Silvio Altianu uh, for the vacant WBO European Flyweight Championship. Silvio, tremendously experienced, he's fought for a world title in the past and twice a European champion as well. And on the undercard, some excellent matchups as uh, you've come to expect on our promotions, this one being shown live on Box Nation on Saturday night. Uh, we have an excellent looking contest between John O'Carroll, here with the, uh, as ever with the magnificent beard from, uh, from Dublin, up against Johnny Quigley from Liverpool. Undefeated fighters, neither of them have tasted defeat as a professional, vacant IBF European super featherweight title there. And as well as that, to my left here, Steve Normand. He's going to be challenging Craig Evans for the WBO European Lightweight Championship. And the winner of that one will be very much moving into a position where a world title fight becomes a serious possibility, possibly later in the year. Uh, and of course, in that lightweight division, the current champion is Terry Flanagan. So the possibility of a fight there would be would be there if Terry at some point decides to move up. Then who knows? A vacant a fight for the vacant belt possibly would also be uh, there. Now, as well as that, we've got some of the other undercard fighters up here. Over on my far right, Tyrone McKenna who is a Belfast boy, uh, undefeated in 14 now, isn't it, Tyrone? And he's going to be fighting uh, a Hungarian, Ferenc Katona, and uh, the possibility of uh, big fights as well for him later on. I know there's a lot of good fighters in that super lightweight division, and he's looking for a chance against a few of those. Uh, David Oliver Joyce, another very good Olympian, Irish uh, international on many occasions over the years. He's going to be making his professional debut. Stephen Ward in his uh, fourth professional fight. He's fighting a six-rounder on Saturday night against Istvan Orsos, another Hungarian. He's up here as well, a light heavyweight. And the big punching Lewis, uh, Lewis Crocker, who's going to be fighting uh, an international welterweight contest in only his second Pro fight, and uh, he didn't waste any time first time around. Just 67 seconds his first fight lasted, and uh, I think I'll uh, might as well kick off uh, with Lewis. How did you uh, enjoy that uh, professional debut? Uh, well, it was brilliant. You know, it was a great experience compared to the amateur. Uh, I really preferred it. You know, it was small and it was the atmosphere, just everything about it was brilliant. Did you feel in any way phased about getting up there in front of the big crowd, or did it just sort of come naturally? No, I knew the hard work I put in and stuff, uh, prior to, uh, the great camp and stuff, so it was just a head of my head for like four weeks, and it was just like an order in the office when I got in there. And having those small gloves, how did that feel? Yeah, it felt great, you know, I put them on, it was like happy days, and I was sitting in the ring, I was like, my opponent, it's like, he has these on as well, so, <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> Don't worry then, but it all went well, so it did. <laughs> well, you've got this uh, reputation of being the big puncher, and uh, presumably you'd hope for more of the same on Saturday night. Well, I hope so, you know, I've had an order great camp and stuff, and I'm getting, I'm getting bigger, getting stronger as I get older and stuff, so uh, I have a game opponent here on, on Saturday, so it should, a, it should be a tough contest. It's one of those boxing truisms, isn't it? You don't get paid for overtime. That's it, you know, if I can take it in before the sky's all ruined, then I'll have to do it. Do you know what do you know about uh, about the fellow you're in against? Um, I know mean, he's caused an upset with the Scottish champion. Uh, he's fought in Ireland five times. You know, had competitive fights. Uh, experienced fella, and he, he comes to win. Radislav Mitev, Bulgarian. Yeah. He, he's he's actually coming into this on the back of a win, isn't he? I mean, he's yes, not certainly uh, turning up with eleven straight defeats. Yeah, so you know, he should be in good shape. So I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Well, we we'll wish you well on that. One. Thank you. Too. And uh, let's hope the. Uh, Victories continue, looking for win number two. And uh, alongside Lewis, uh, Stephen, Stephen Ward, who's uh, going to be fighting Istvan Orsos. Um, your fourth time out, it's going to be a six rounder this one, isn't it? Uh, yeah, we'll do six rounds, we'll look forward to the 
been all uh, not all point swings so far. Yeah, yeah, all good. The yeah, last couple of fights I've had, fellas have been you know, pretty durable boys. No different to this guy, you know, he's, he's pretty durable too, but definitely think with my style, it's going to do more around, so I'm really, I'm really looking forward to uh, making an upset, making a statement in the six rounder. And there's a, a little dust up going on for the vacant Irish title before too long, isn't there? Is, it, is that next week? Stephen, Steve Collins Jr. Yeah. who's uh, fighting Paddy yeah. McDonough. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. How about the prospect of uh, going in against one of them sometime? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, it's basically to me, it's something I'd love to get involved in. Um, at the minute, obviously, me and Priority is the claim of the round. And the reason for the last time was going to be a six rounder, but the complications came, um, which happened. Uh, so we ended up doing a four, we're doing a six of this, and I plan to be moving up pretty quick to eight, um, and then be in the mix for whatever, whatever's down the line, the pipeline. How, how far away do you think you are from going in for a fight like that against perhaps the winner of that, of that one coming up? Not far, personally, I feel that fitness-wise and ability-wise, I'm, I'm there. It's just almost now the experience they ran to me. Um, I want to get them. I think I'm just going to jump from strength to strength as the rounds increase. Could I uh, ask whoever's uh, got the phone warbling away if you can just mute it or turn it off just while we're continuing because probably this is going out live and uh, we'll be hearing we'll be hearing the phone. Um, so the win, the fight coming up on Saturday night. What do you reckon? Do you know anything about the guy you're in against? Not so much. Um, he's a he's a terrible fella. He's been in. Um, Couple of half decent fellas. Uh, to be honest, I'm just excited to get the sixth round. But I think it's the more rounds that he plays in the my type of style, and, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Okay, well, we look forward to seeing you fighting as well. Good yeah. luck. Cheers, thank you. Now, the way on my far right, we've got a, a tall, super lightweight from Belfast, Tyrone McKenna, who uh, had a, a good win last time out uh, when he fought here back in March against the Dubliner, Jake uh, Hanny, and uh, you must have been pretty pleased with your performance there, weren't you? Yeah, yeah it was an exciting fight. Uh, it was the first, first two rounds were very competitive, and then I started to take over with fitness and pace. And, uh, was after the fight, I had a, lot of, a big talking point of the neck, so I was glad to, to uh, get, a, get more support. There was a bit of uh, bit of hype beforehand, a bit of uh, bit of verbals at the press conference, and then again at the weigh-in. Did that kind of motivate you? It seems every fighter man has that, so uh, yeah, I'm used to that kind of thing. Um, it's not you, is it? You don't stop. Uh, I'm not even at the stand now, my friends. That's the Dublin tree. Uh, yeah, there was a bit of movement, but that, that doesn't get in my head. I enjoy a bit of that. Uh, gets me more motivated for the fight. Uh, it's more up for the fight. Um, when I win, it's more peace. How did you rate your performance then on a sort of a, a 1 to 10? 10 every 10? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm sure that's not wrong, but I'm just happy to get the win, get the, the KO and everything. There's a lot of good names around in that division on the British scene at the moment, isn't there? And, uh, you know, to an extent, you've kind, of, you've kind of continued winning and you're sort of moving on a little bit under the radar. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm trying not to move on to the radar, calling everyone out, but uh, I have to stand up and take over sometime. Hopefully I'll get a, a big name soon. So I mean, who do you, who do you fancy? Because uh, I was making a little list. There's uh, some good there's some good guys around, you know, Willie Lemond, Tyrone Nurse, of course. Uh, and then there's that fight coming up on July 8th between yeah. Ahara Davis and Josh Taylor. Yeah, well, I've called out Ahara Davis with 100 pounds already. So hopefully he, he can take, take the fight. Uh, Robbie Jr. or as you said, Tom Nurse. Anyone top, anyone top ten, Britain, I want to fight. And you think you're ready for that, man? Yeah, hundred percent. Um, the training camps always go good. I'm, I'm improving every training camp, every fight. Uh, I've had the experience now. I've had thirteen fights, so I'm ready to take a punch. Okay, well, you'll be moving on on Saturday against Ferenc Katona, who's a, a fighter from Budapest. I guess you won't have seen him, and you're just sort of, uh, just sort of yeah. kind of working out what's in front of you when you get in the ring. Yeah, that's it. I'm uh, just going to feel, feel out for one or two rounds and then <coughs> see what he's about. Uh, we've well, seen a few clips of him. He comes with Fady, he, he throws big shots, he's strong, so come forward, Fader, so it should be an exciting fight. 
Now, all the guys up here are going to have had that sort of nervous moment when they got in a professional boxing ring for the first time. And it's going to be a first time on Saturday for one of Ireland's outstanding amateurs over the last decade, David Oliver Joyce from uh, Westmeath, who's making his debut and so becoming the fourth member of the Irish Olympic squad from Rio, Katie Taylor, Michael Conlon, and of course uh, Paddy have already, uh, have already turned pro and had success, and now David's turn. Looking forward to it, mate? Yeah, I can't wait. Um, I had a great camp for a great six weeks in Braille with Pete Taylor. Um, I'm just excited, so excited to do it. So it's a new, it's a new journey for me. So I've done a lot of amateur. Um, my main girl sat to play a new job. Do you have any any nerves, any sort of sense of trepidation as you're going into it? Yeah, you always have nerves, you know, but nerves give you energy. So um, I, I feed from it, you know, and um, it, it makes your, it makes box better, box a lot better that night when you when you have the nerves. Like, but if you have no nerves, you're not going to perform, you know. Is there, some, is there always the possibility that you try to impress too much when you get in the first time around, so you've just got to concentrate, you know, you've done it God knows how many times when you fought as an amateur, you know what to do, you've just got to keep your focus and not get too hyped up. Yeah, um, they're all there to win, everybody's there to win, so you can't get too excited, you know. Um, I don't as an amateur, I box some of the best boxers in the world, but I've always kept my head cool, you know, so I'm going to do the same thing Saturday night, keep it cool, you know. Now, as, a, as an amateur, you've, you've actually had experience of fighting six and eight rounds, haven't you? Yeah, I boxed in WSB for three seasons and was doing five and six rounds this year. So, and then I went uh, APB there over the last two seasons, two years, and I've done three eight rounds this year. So I'm well used to doing eight and six rounds and well able to do it. So that's why this one's a six round. Now, without being, without being rude, I wouldn't wish to do that. You know, you're not, you're not, you're not 22. So presumably you want to get on with it and, uh, and be into really top class in, within what sort of time scale? Yeah, I don't want to be sitting around looking at the big names fighting for belts, you know, I want to be getting in there straight away. I've got the ability to do it, like, I box some of the best boxers in the world and I want to do it in this division, I want to do it in the profession, I want to take over this way, so. What, um, what sort of time scale do you think it can be? You know, yeah. to, you, you hear, I mean, you should never, I know, look beyond your, live beyond your next fight, but in an ideal world, if you're mapping out your, your future career, a couple of years, say? Yeah, I hope the next year we'll, we'll, we'll be going somewhere near that. You know, we'll, we'll hope the next year we'll, we, we, my team that we'll be looking at the bigger fights next year, you know. But it's, it's all around the course for me right now, you know, I take one fight at a time and I don't look past that. David, you've sort of served your, term, your, your, your time as, uh, as, uh, as an amateur and uh, got so much success. I'm going to just throw the first uh, grenade into the press conference. You know, when you heard that, uh, that Conor McGregor was going to be fighting Floyd Mayweather, what do you think of that? Yeah, I was looking for tickets and uh, <laughs> trying to book a flight out. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know, I'm listening to the radio there on the way up along, people are saying that when this happened, boxing has gone off the earth, you know, like, this is not good for boxing, but I think it's, it's a good thing, you know, I, I can't point a finger who I think is going to win, I hope the Irish guy does it, we're all behind him, but, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be exciting. So you don't, you don't adhere to what Oscar De La Hoya is saying about it being bad for boxing? Yeah, I've listened to that on the radio, and it's bad for boxing, Call of Radio was on the radio this morning as well, the same thing he's saying, but, um, I don't know, I can't, I can't actually say anything about that, you know. Do you mind being on the undercard? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> well, good luck uh, with your pro debut on Saturday night. I want to say as well, fighting uh, another Hungarian, Gabor Kovac, as things stand. So uh, let's see if, uh, if David can kick it all off with a professional win. Now, our main uh, uh, support bout, I'll start with uh, John O'Carroll and Johnny Quigley which is the vacant IBF European Super Featherweight title and on, on paper, guys, this one looks as though it's going to be an outstanding fight. I'll start, start with Jono first. What, a, what, a, what about this one? It's, uh, you know, somebody's defeat has got to go. It's got that little bit of, ex, of added edge, hasn't it? Yeah, of course. You know, it's um, just one of them things. None of us know how to do it, so we're definitely going to be coming there giving them 100%. And well, I prefer you have a start with him, so then we can slag him a little bit and get, get the team rolling, you know. 
Thanks for having me. 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 Yeah, come right now, it is going to be a good fight. I know it's going to be a good fight. From what I've heard, Johnny's in top, top shape. And that, that's what I'm hoping for, you know, because I'm definitely in the best shape I've ever been in my life. And I've been spanning 15 in my own, so I'm well ready for this, you know what I mean? Like, 12 rounds is going to be easy work compared to the hard work I'm going to be doing with training. So, um, yeah, I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. Johnny, what do you reckon? Ready? Yeah, ready. Right, it's a great fight. Obviously, um, two unbeaten fighters going up against each other. But um, there's a lot of talk. Come on, I'll do the talking in the ring. He says he's in the, the shape of his life. What, what about you? Because you've only had one fight since 2014. What sort of a what sort of an impact potentially does that have? Yeah, I don't think it plays a major role in, in, in anything. So honest, because the preparation has been great. Um, my weight's great. I'm fit. I'm fit. I'm strong and I'm ready for the show on. And uh, you've, you've actually been quoted as saying that he won't have seen anything like you, amateur or pro. Can you sort of uh, expand a bit on that? Yeah, it's just my style, the way I fight is very unique. No one fights like me. I've got a very different style. Um, some say it's risky. Some people love it, some people hate it, but you'll still watch me. It's a hands down sort of style. I suppose the nice way, the nice way of putting it is that it's a kind of a a taking the mickey, disrespectful sort of style. Um, if that how it comes across, but that's not the way I want to come across. I'm, it's just a style I've developed over the years. Um, and uh, like I say, love it or hate it, people will watch it. What sort of a fight do you anticipate when you get in against it? Tell us how you think it's going to go. Um, just, it's just another fight, isn't it? He's going to come out and do what he's always done, and I'm going to come out and do what I've always done. That's how it is. So you ready? Of course I'm ready, I was born ready mate. This is a, this is a couple of years, you know, he can he can say that he prepared well and this, that, and the other. His time off, he knows just as well as every other fighter sitting up here knows. You take that time off and you're doing 12 rounds, mate, you've never even done 10 rounds. So you're doing 12 rounds, that's gonna affect you big time. It's gonna affect you in your head, mentally. I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch his heart break four or five rounds. I'm gonna see, he's thinking in his own head, can I actually do these rounds? His team last week wanted us a 10 rounder. I got asked, will I do a 10 rounder? I said, no. What's been preparing for 12 rounds? Will I do 10? You know, it's easy work. Um, I've already done 10 rounds, so I'm looking forward to getting these easy 12 rounds. <laughs> easy as well. Yeah. And look at your story, you're saying like, um, your story is unique. It's not unique at all, there's loads of fighters for you like it. But okay. if, if all I can say is, me personally, I just think you do things wrong and you've never been corrected. Yep. That's all it is. Your style is not. Okay. It's not like you've perfected it or you're you're a Mayweather or even a Prince Nassim. And Prince Nassim got found out, and you are no Prince Nassim. Let me tell you that song. So this is gonna be this is gonna be a fun night. But if we I'm catch not you, trying to be Mayweather. I'm not trying to be Nas. I'm just trying to be me. So yeah, exactly. I'm not trying to be me, and I guarantee you. When I catch you with them eight ounce gloves, pal, you have no defense. So how, how can your head, how can your head take that impact for twelve rounds? We just cannot see it happen. There's a lot of talk and things, but you know you got back up. Saturday nice. We'll see what's happening. I like to big it up because I want to talk and make sure you know just as well as I know you're in for a horrible night. Oh, it's going to be terrible. <laughs> You've only, got, you've only got one stoppage win in 13, John's yeah. only got three in 14, so yes, he most been. people are looking at it and say this is going to be a long, grueling fight. Fair enough, like, I've only got three stoppages, he's only got one stoppage. Why is he channeling? He's my Tyson. <laughs> Please, stop one. Yeah, you're, you're going to see, we do 12 rounds, pal, and my power is going to catch you, trust me. And you have your hands down, we fought good lads, you have to remember that, we fought good season lads. You have defenses, and the journeyman that I did for you, they took up, caught up into a ball. You can't catch them, you know, they don't want to get caught with one or two. But you, you, you can't put your hands up. So you're going to get caught clean in the chin, and when I catch you on the chin, it's, it's like that. I won't be able to catch you clean in the chin without with horrendous bone fall off on your chin. Ah, come here. <laughs> horrendous. Give it a chin. Just because just you can't roll the ball. Listen, just give it a chin. Just because you can't roll the ball. Oh, you know, it's 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 cheers, cheers. This is this is well maintained, bird. Man, we got oil and all of it. You know, so <laughs> showing all this. 
Serious question. There's plenty, right. there's plenty of it. So you're it was nearly right in the train, let me just tell you that. Are you prepared to get in there and fight with that beard being as long as it is now? Well, as long as I can get in and get a cushion on my chin and duct tape it so I've got that protection, that's, that's great. <laughs> Come here, you can actually have a cushion, don't take it all you want, mate. We're going to hit you in the temple and that's when you're going to drop. Okay. Great. It's going to be an interesting one. The, uh, the, chat's, the chat's good and I'm pretty sure that the fight is going to be a, is going to be a good one as well because uh, somebody's undefeated record has to go. John O, 13 out of 13. Johnny, 14 out of 14. Who's it going to be? Well, that's one of our support <laughs> fights. And as well as that, another outstanding one as well. Tremendously experienced Irishman to my left here, Stephen Ormond, who's going to be challenging Craig Evans for the WBO European lightweight title. And, uh, you know, you don't have to be a huge student of boxing to know that this one simply has to be a good fight, doesn't it, Craig? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, it's going to be a cracking fight. Definitely, it's going to be a cracking fight. Um, we both come to fight. And um, I've trained really hard for the fight, so. Whatever game plan he's going to bring, I can match. So I'm looking forward to it. You know the kind of know the style he usually adopts. Are you, are you ready for that? Are you ready to fight at the sort of intensity that Stephen will bring? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm ready for whatever he's got to bring. I trained hard now, so all the hard work's done. It's just that I'm um, getting in out doing the job on um, Saturday. But um, he's highly rated by I, I rate him, so he's the best man win that. Stephen, what do you reckon? What sort of shape are you? Well, the best shape, or the best uh, training camp I've ever had, so it's going to be a great fight, and it's the best man then, so but, uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a cracker. 34 you are now, you, uh, I guess. I'm looking for one. I've got, to, I've got to say this again, I've got to say this nicely, but you're at a stage now where you kind of can't afford another Oh, yeah, but that's it, that's it. I'm going to push the corner now, I've got to win. It just, that's, I'm hungry for this now, and I've done everything right, so we'll see exactly. And is it going to be the the uh, the guy we expect. I mean, is it is it the usual style? You're going to be in there trying to get him to fight at a pace he's uncomfortable with. But he fights the same way, so it's going to be the same way. It's going to be a good forward fight. It's like say about the both of us, you know. It's going to be exciting for you. Is he like fireworks? <laughs> <Exploding>. <laughs> you had that uh, terrific win against uh, Thomas Stalker, which was the third of the third of the trilogy. Would do you think that, I mean, this is going to be a completely different test, isn't it? I mean, Thomas is a stylist, Stephen's more of a, you know, more of an all-action man. Yeah, yeah, um, he's more, more, I've got more knockouts, so he's going to be a bigger puncher than Tom. So, um, I've got quite a lot to come, and um, hopefully on Saturday night, they can provide the goods and come and still be champion. Like. And there is a chance for, for both of you, I guess, whoever comes out of this, that you, you're right up into world title contention. This is, it's in a sense, it's an eliminator, isn't it? That's what it is, you know, it's, that's what I am for, you know. Back up there now on a WBL, WBL title is what I'm aiming for, you know. Pascal always said that he thought you were destined to be a, a world champion somewhere. A few bumps in a row, we're getting there now, you know. And you're feeling absolutely at top four. Feeling great, especially the day before I went in. I've done everything with the weight, trained down my great so. How much does it play on your mind that you had that you had that fight against Terry Flanagan and that was an eliminator yeah. and it didn't work out your way? I mean, a lot of people thought you were going to win that one, but it didn't work out. How much does that bug you? Well, I literally, I literally lost the head of it in that one. <laughs> For, uh, no, it's so you learn from, you know, you learn from your mistakes, don't you? So, but the second time around. And Craig, if you were to win and were to get a world title shot, I mean, that's, it's a life changer, isn't it? Oh, definitely. Uh... Well, it's just I'm um, looking forward to the Saturday. You've got to get this job done first. It's, it's not my busy, so um, I, I've got all the tools to do it now. I know I'm guaranteed. So um, get this out of the way Saturday and then we'll, we'll talk from here. Like. Are you ready for the toughest fight of your life? Oh, definitely. I've trained hard. There's no cutting corners in our gym. We've got Tony training me all the time. We've got his son running with us all the time, so we can't cut corners. So I'm ready. And what do you reckon about it? I mean, it's, it's got it. It's... It's kind of got to be hard. Yes, isn't it? Listen, there's no even shit talk between the two of us. We know him years. I know he's good for us. He's a champion as well, so we know it's going to be a great fight. So we're going to have our talk in the ring. You know, certainly. 
I should also ask you about uh, I forgot the other the other guys as well. I would have asked their uh, opinion as well. So be free, free to join in if you wish. What about uh, Clive McGregor and Floyd Mayweather? It's, it's great, isn't it? It's great. They are making a lot of money, aren't they? Going into business. It's a, yeah, exactly. It's a business at the end of the day. <laughs> McGregor. Uh, if, you, if you want my opinion, McGregor, it's. it's He's a legend for calling him out. Look at the payday that he's going to get. And then Mayweather, he's going to get a massive payday. And in my opinion, it's going to, it's going to be easy to work from. But I'd get in, I'd get in at 50 years of age and fight him doing 100 rounds. Do you know what? I'd get in against two lads on the same night for the money that they're getting. You know what I mean? That's major money. But you don't care what people say in the boxing world. And Oscar De La Hoya is just jealous that, that he's not making that money anymore. You know what I mean? That, that's major money for both of them. So. Oh, that's the business, and then the boats are for life. What about, uh, what about uh, you, lads, as well? What do you reckon of uh, the, the fight which has been announced for August? In, uh, I, think it's, I think it's good. I just think it's um, easy money for um, Floyd Mayweather. I think he, he should win hands down. But he always got a punch of chance, so it's just exciting, I think. What do you reckon, John? Um, I think it's, it's, it's good for insane. Um, but for the boxing shortest, I don't think they'll be happy with the fight because obviously he doesn't force a, a boxer, has he? And, but it's a money business in it and it's going to generate lots of money. It's a guy effectively making his pro debut against a bloke who's down as one of the best of all time. Yeah, and that's how the boxing shortest will look at. Amazing. We will see. We will see. Anyway, moving on to uh, what's uh, nominally our top of the bill on Saturday night. Paddy Barnes against uh, Silviano Altiano, is that the correct pronunciation, Silvio? Silvio Olcan, this is my name. I'll try and get it more perfect this time, next time around. First of all, I want to apologize for my English level, so be, be patient with me and have mercy. It's better than, <laughs> my, it's better than my Spanish, and certainly better than my Romanian. <laughs> I speak Romanian because I'm Romanian, I was born there, I grew up there, I, I learned boxing there. Now I'm living in Spain because my wife <laughs> is Spanish, my little girl is Spanish, so I travel all over the world. <laughs> and you, you, you actually live in Madrid, practice yes. and train in Madrid? Yes. I'm living in Madrid, I train in there, so my life is there now since 2004. 39 years old now, but uh, still yes. in good nick? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still in shape, yes, of course. And you've been, correct me if I'm wrong, twice a European champion. Yes. And you also fought for the world title back in 2010. See, it was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, but he was so, on. He's not going to tell you this, but he was on the wrong side of the split decision in Japan. So uh, that oh. kind of, kind of, uh, kind no, of. When no. you look at that, you kind of think this guy should have won the fight. Did you think he won? Of course, I won. I, I won. Me, you know. And the other, I think Japanese, they they seen that. So this is it. I feel great. I, I felt great. I felt good. I think I won this fight, that fight, but uh, this is my life. Now that was uh, a long time ago, 2010. Yeah. Since then, a few more years, mm -hmm. and uh, you fought, uh, fought a loss against Paul Butler back in 2015, stopped in six. I mean, what sort of, how, how good are you now compared with where you were in 2010? Uh, first of all, it, it wasn't my weight, he, it was in his weight. You moved weight. up to superfly. Yes. Mm, now I'm telling you, I'm, I feel good, I, I, I'm in shape, so we'll see what happens Saturday night. You must know plenty about Paddy. You've seen him, no, you've watched no, him. No, 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 I, I, I go out there and make my, do my job. So. I do my boxing, like I always do, so... You've had, what, 28 professional fights, Paddy's had two. You've got experience. Yes, I am... 
I have I have experience. He has uh, youngness, youngness. Yeah, you. Yeah. The the um, age, no. So we see who will win. Paddy. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Up to uh, champion. <coughs> I asked him why the team to get me because I could be sitting next year to an old fight another eight eight it's and it's just pointless because I'll be kind of old I'll have thought nobody I'll be a same kind of boxer I'll have a bit more experience but you know that's all enough so I thought I'm 39 I need to jump in the deep end and I believe that I'm good enough so there's no woman woman found are you the sort of guy who kind of fights to the level of the of the man in front of you? Is exactly. Is there a tendency for that? 100%. <coughs> well, my second, I had my talking with David, that was a joke, but my second thing, um, I just tried a few things to think, because you know, I was the experience of a six rounder. Um, I just boxed to, to every time on the level of them. And, you know, I've been watching Silvio, and <coughs> I respect him really, really tough mate. Um, he's going to be in my face for 10 rounds, but you know, he has experience, but what I have is the skill and the speed, and as he says, you said, I'm, I'm younger now, so I think that's all the bell part of the thing. We're going to be seeing, uh, you know, sort of you rising to another level, a more mature belly. 100%, and in my first few fights, I was nervous because, I mean, for a fact, it wasn't allowed. lose. Everyone else paid the lose, and that's the journey went on. This guy um, has a bit of record, he's been twice European champion, should have been world champion. So he's not going to want to lose to somebody who's 2 0. No, he's a lot of pride and he's, he's always been chasing hard. And if, he, he, if he wins his fight, which obviously isn't, but if he does, I send him back and contest him for a world cake. You are 100% confident that you're not gambling and taking this too soon? 100%. Well, I know it's, it's boxing. Even if it was Jordan one, it'd still be a gamble. Because I know we've been anybody, but I know me on my game, so I can be the best in the world. And I'm a full, but from performance, that's how you make it, it's proven to show. I did a, a sad little bit of uh, research. The quickest that a British boxer ever got to winning a world title was in 1993, when Paul Weir became a champion, minimum weight champion, uh, in only his sixth professional fight. If you win on Saturday night, you get the ranking, which potentially puts you in to world title contention. Do you, would you like to get a world title shot maybe even quicker than Paul Wynn? 100%. Well, for me, as an amateur, I created a history for Ireland and hopefully as a professional, I could have been as well. Now, who would, you, who would you, your ideal opponent be? I mean, the, 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 big, the big draw would be the WBO champion, I guess, wouldn't it? The Chinese guy, Zhu Xiaoming. Yeah, there's the world champions there, but the only one to really make sense in professional boxing is usually me because he's the money man. You know, he makes more money than Mayweather and Pacquiao. All the top boxers put together to be sponsorships because he's in China. So he is the main man, but the rest has been be world champion, but some very, very good champions at the weight. And, but Xi Jinping is definitely the weakest and definitely the one who I have been for. Yeah, you've got the style to take him if you've got that chance. Yeah, well, that time I thought. Um, so the came back and you know I actually won the last round, I think I've been working more rounds or an hour round actually uh, what I beat him. So first of all, I know it's more rounds and Which champion and, where, where, where was that that you last fought him? I probably should know that but I don't have to look at my notes. In the uh, London Olympics. And that's the last time you're up against him. Yeah. So you you know you know exactly what he's about. Hundred percent. He has improved a bit as a professional but he hasn't improved that much. So if it were to happen again, happy I'm days. I know for a fact that it would definitely be, and if not, I'd be paying my money for it. <laughs> so on Saturday night, you've said this fellow's going to be in your face. He's, he's obviously in shape. You don't need to look at him to know he's in shape and he's ready. What sort of fight can we anticipate? Just, um, <clears throat> I know for a fact he's expecting me to, because I'm fresh and amateurs, to go in and try and blast him away. I'm a very smart boxer, you know, he's very tough in game, so I'm not expecting to stop him. I'm expecting it to be a hard and right fight, but my skills will show. But I don't think people really want to fight like this actually is because of his pedigree, so I'm really looking forward to keeping my name on the ring.
the five division. Well, it's certainly a great chance to get yourself up into uh, world title contention. I'll ask the other fellows about uh, about the Conor McGregor situation. What do you what do you what do you reckon to him going in and fighting Floyd Mayweather? I think it's brilliant. You know, he's professional it, boxing. It's I'd say it's twenty professional boxing, twenty percent sport, eighty percent business. So it's a brilliant business move. I think the likes of Austin and Ohio and whoever else. I'm not just jealous, but they're not gonna cut the money. And I'm jealous as well, because I have a lovely other car. But if I'm honest, I think my are probably gonna look at him, but I've got a lot of prepare and I'm has he got a has he got a, a realistic punchless chance? Because you know, I mean, I've talked to a few people and they reckon oh Mayweather will just prop him up as as long as he wants to, outbox him, humiliate him, and then stop him whenever whenever he wants to. I mean, is is it more to it than that? To be honest, I'd be stupid if I thought Mayweather was going to win. Mm -hmm. Mayweather will probably win, but unless you kick him, he could. He could. Kick I hope he does kick him in the last round. I'd be really nice to see Mayweather's head. Still. <laughs> 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 you want to expand on that one? He's not your favourite guy. I just don't like him personally the way he gets on and his demeanour and all the boxing. I just think he's an arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I look forward to seeing that in the papers tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks a lot, guys. Um, we will have uh, a chance of uh, photographs for you all. And of course, for one-to-one -one interviews, all the guys are here. So newspapers, television, radio, anybody who wants to talk to these fellas, they are here for your uh, for your purpose. Big show on Saturday night. If you've not got your tickets yet, be sure to be there. I think it's going to be I think it's going to be excellent because on paper it looks as though we've got three outstanding fights and some terrific talent on the undercard as well. I think it's going to be uh, worth the investment, as they say. Championship boxing in Belfast on Saturday night. Thanks a lot for coming, and I think we'll do some head-to-head uh, -head photographs now. Thank you very much indeed.